Hello guys, uh, in today's tutorial we'll be back to something more basic because you are already thinking, taking care of sp things like scores and whatnot and it was a bit too complicated we're going to, to go back to more physic elements like the platform today we'll be making one of those scrolling platforms like in those in the Mario levels that were in the castles where the platforms would always go up and and will disappear and more will be created and the way that we're going to do this is, is that we're going to instantiate a platform and give the speed and whenever that platform reaches a certain height the platform will be deleted now we could use a thing called the object pool because that would spare us some memory but because I don't know how to do that object pool yet I'm not going to so I may, I may take care of that in a later tutorial but anyways let's get started I've already imported the platform into my sprites I'm going to change the pixels to units to 20 this to point and true color apply put it in here and I'm going to give it a box collider add component physics 2D box collider 2D then I'm also going to give it a rigid body 2D and make it kinematic and with a fixed angle so that it doesn't interact much with other elements and now I'm going to create here empty game object called the platform emitter which will be the origin the origin point of the platforms and I'm going to add it to first give it the icon so that we can see it in the scene like so we can make the platforms start here and let's add a component a new script and give it a name platform emitter create an ad open that script and the way that we're going to instantiate those platforms will be using a coroutine anyways let's create some variables public game object platform which will be where we'll be we'll storing the where we'll be storing the platform the public float interval which will be the interval between instantiating platforms and we also want to create the public float called velocity which will be the velocity of the platforms now we'll be creating a coroutine so to create a coroutine all you have to do is instead of typing void or public void or whatever just type i enumerator give it a name just like a normal function and parentheses like that and of course the brackets and to call a coroutine instead of just having to type its name like a function like this I don't think it works like that way you have to type start coroutine and inside those parentheses the name of the coroutine with the parentheses with the parameters in it and with this done let's make the coroutine first we want this to be a infinite loop so type there while true so that it loops forever and in that loop first what we're going to type is the interval between instantiating platforms so type yield return new wait for seconds and then the interval variable that you created was it was it interval it was interval like so so that and what this does is that it waits the interval time which we can set to be by default equal to 1f then we want to instantiate the platforms so instantiate the platform at this transforms 
at this position so transform with the lowercase t dot position with no rotation quaternion dot identity and this way we will be only, only instantiating the platforms but we won't give them speed to give them speed we have to name this a thing because if you don't know this instantiate thing uh, returns an object and what we want is to first convert that object into a game object and then give it speed so this is just like a uh, regular variable just type here game object and let's name it plat equals the game object this game object this way this thing converts the object into the game object and it stores it on this variable here the plat variable and this plat will be every single one of these platforms that will be coming out of here anyways let's give that plat uh, that platform a speed so platform or plat or whatever dot raised by 2d dot velocity let's and make it equal to a new vector 3 or vector 2 actually because this is a 2d game and the uh, x will be 0 and the y will be equal to that variable over there which, which was the velocity variable hmm, this is not auto completing there must be some kind of error somewhere or maybe not and we can make that velocity to be by default 1f I don't know if that's a lot or not a lot but we'll see and probably if we first drag that platform prefab into there and because we don't have already created that prefab just uh, grab the platform prefab into the prefab folder and then click on the emitter and in this field over here just drag the platform prefab into there you cannot delete this platform over here because it's doing nothing and now if we play this it should be instantiating platforms at every one second let's see okay they are instantiating let's see how they interact with that they keep moving just like we wanted because they are kinematic okay and with these two variables that we've created we can do whatever we want we can change the velocity <laughs> we can change the interval we can even give it negative velocity so that it travels in the other direction and with this done there's only one thing that we have to do which is here in the platform prefab click on the platform prefab and uh, I'm going to add a component which is a script that I've had already created called destroy by time uh, I can explain you how this how this script works basically it destroys this very same game object when we tell it to destroy and we want it to be destroyed for example after 10 seconds and just like that we've created platforms that our player can interact with let's make the interval 0.5 and the velocity free and if we play you can see that our player can interact with it oh they are being instantiated too quickly as you can see our player can interact with it but as you can see wait there's this bug because our player seems like it's on the air and that's a bug that's easily fixed because the way that made the way that made sure that our player was on the ground was by checking if what was below him was had the layer ground this layer over here this ground layer so all we have to go to do is to go into the prefabs to the platform and name that layer into ground so that the platforms are also considered the ground so that our player can still stand on them and now you can see that that bug doesn't happen and our player acts just fine and this is today's tutorial thank you for watching in the next tutorials we'll be taking care of other kinds of platforms any suggestions that you have just tell them and thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial